Hi everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood hanger Hobbit here. Welcome aboard War Thunder Buying Guide for Props 2021. This one is brought to you by Jane Sprite, who bless her little heart, gave old Harry some GE to do some extra shopping. Oh heck yes, and she will definitely be getting some reviews on the new toys I pick up. Oh hell yeah. But remember, the same rules apply as with all the other buying guides. If it's below tier 3, it's for funsies, it's not for grinding. If you want to know about the chets, go somewhere else. Oh, Harry is not getting on the hamster wheel of suffering and paying $50 a pop just to watch a plane be fucking worthless in two patches. No! No, stop it, Gaijin. Just stop it with your compression. Nasty. And number three, if you want the tanks, go somewhere else, because, yeah... Oh, Harry tried to spot green tanks on green background in green hills with green bushes. E no, that's just not going to work. Yeah. Oh, Harry, he likes the props. I stick with the props. There will be a couple I cover that I'm either going to pick up or have no intention and will tell you why you shouldn't pick them up. But most of these I've had, I've flown them, and I can tell you what they do. Starting off with Icobi's J8A. Hell to the no. Nope, 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 nope. Why? This is the worst gladiator in the game. You take a gladiator and then you take away the good British freaking API belts and give it shitty AP belts. Here you go. That's what you get. Why would you fly this over the gladiator in the British tree? I mean, I always hated Bohica when he would bitch on Captured and Lend Lease birds because they're in the tree. But you know what? If it's a good bird, I don't care which tree it's in. If it's a good bird, I want to fly it. If it's a bad bird, I don't. This is a bad bird. Because the thing that makes the gladiator good is the API belts, which is the one thing this don't get. So, yeah. It's just 125 GE. So, yeah, if you want to pick it up, maybe just for it being cheap. Sure, why not? Otherwise, mm, no. Instead, the beautiful Morco Moran. Oh, look at this thing. Isn't it lovely? Yeah, when this was first in, put into the game, it was, well, it was more than a little broken. It's not quite as broken now, but yeah, it is still quite, quite good. I think I will just put up the little cost of the GE right below there on the screen because I can't keep up with how many things because, good God, the amount of planes we're going to have to go through just on the minor nations is stupid. And, God, when it gets to the major nations, good Lord, these damn videos are probably going to be an hour freaking long. But, oh, well, there's a ton of premiums to get through. But, honestly, good plane. That freaking 12.7, you wouldn't think it'd be that good. At this BR, that thing hits like a 20 mil. Yeah, so split your guns, use the 12.7 for your main damage, use the little pew pew if you need to kill some ground targets, eh, if guys never fixes the ground targets so they don't instantly set you on fire, that is. Yes, now we bring to the loveliness. Oh, this beautiful thing, the pure Mursky. Look at it. It's basically what happens if you take a 109 G2 and give it wooden wings like a yak. Oh, the climb rate is great. The agility is great. The guns are actually better than the G2s. You don't get the gun pots, but honestly, you don't need them. You got 50 cows. Yes. The only thing this thing cannot do is dive like a freaking 109 G2 because of, yeah, wooden wings. But honestly, don't dive. That, that's very simple. Don't dive. Yes. Now, as far as these two damn things, let's see the preview. No. Yeah. Same BR as the Morco. Trash guns, trash handling, and from what I have been told by people who have it, so much as a single pew pew hits anywhere in this area, your engine instantly dies and you fall out of the sky. So, yeah, even at 350 GE, I would say pass. That would be a hard pass. This, on the other hand, I will be picking up if it's on sale. Look at this beast. The 109 G6. Oh, hell yeah. Look at the face. Look at the face. And if I'm not mistaken, it gets the gun pods. Don't it get the gun pods? Oh, uh, yes, it does. Ooh, it gets two different kinds of gun pods. 20 mils or 30 mils. Nice. 
Yeah, honestly, though, at the price, eh, I'm getting it because I'm a collector, but seriously, eh, I would probably get the Pure Mirsky over this just because the Pure Mirsky is more unique. And eh, the hand, the handling on the, the Pure Mirsky is just, mwah. G6s aren't bad, but I'm getting it because I'm a collector. But honestly, eh, given the choice of one or the other, if I only get to pick one, PM1 every single time. And now we come to the French. And I'm sorry if my voice is sounding a little bit scratchy because, yeah, Mrs. Hobbit's got all the windows open because it's a lovely fall evening and she wants to enjoy the sound of the crickets and the stuff. And old Harry's allergic to the pollen, so it's making me more than a little snuffly. Anyway, let us get on to the French. Pallor D510. Oh, no. No, no. Can you make it work? Yes, I have gotten aces in this thing. Is it enjoyable? No. <laughs> you only get 60 rounds in the cannon and two seriously weak South French machine guns. Yeah, the climb rate's amazing. I'll give it that, but yeah. Why is this a starter bird? Can someone explain that to me? I mean, seriously. You're going to give this to noobs. Yeah, do you know how much trigger discipline it takes to make this damn thing work? Really? You're going to give this to someone that's literally just starting the game? Really? No. Instead, if you're a new player to French, here you go. Look at this lovely thing. The P-40F Lafayette. Look at this. Six barrels of freedom. Yes, decent climb rate, good dive speed, decent handling, and you can strap a boom to it. So if you want to do ground forces as well, there you go. Comes in a pack with the B-1 Tur. Have both. Highly recommend. You can't go wrong with it. Great pack. With the B-1 Tur, you're going to suffer in up tiers, but... Yeah, just don't take this bird with it. And most of the time, you'll end up at like 1.7, 2.0, where you just club the living hell out of everybody. But yeah, the bird by itself, great fun. Absolutely adore it. Then we get, holy crap, this damn thing. This thing, oh, good Lord, before the freaking last patch, I would have said, run away, stay away. It was bad. But then they finally got around to fixing the FI 30 round, which, yeah, good lord, how long did that take them? Three and a half friggin' years? But yes, now the cannon, it actually works. The cannon is actually reliable and consistent and can do some serious work. Oh, hey, oh, yay. And look at the climb rate. Yeah, this thing's got good climb, good turn. You can't dive, just remember, you are a yak. Give it up. You are never going to dive in a yak, so just, just don't. No, don't do it. But other than that, great bird, and it's cheap. As you can see there on the screen, its price is cheap. So, yes, if you want a really good all-around grinder for the French, there you go. Well, unless you play tanks. If you play the tanks, I would say get this instead. It's the exact same price, but it can carry the boom boom. So, there you go. But honestly, if you're wanting a pure fighter, I'm picking this up during the sale. But then again, like I said, I like to collect things. But yeah, as far as versatility goes, I would say the freaking Yak ends up doing better than this thing. Simply because, well, it's heavy. It's a freaking Razorback, so it don't have a lot of power. It tends to bleed speed and climbs from what I've been told in turns. Yeah, it, it's, it's going to take some work if you want to use this thing. But then again, you got a buttload of freedom cow, so you can use it for silver lion grind. So that's a positive. So it, I would say it really depends on how much you are a pilot versus a tanker. If you're a pilot, go for the Yaki Taki. If you're a tanker, go for the P-47. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Finally, we get to this lovely thing, the Narval. Ah, uh, as much as I as it kills me to say these, I absolutely adore this bird, and I stand by everything I said. It is still a fucking monster 
Straight from the bowels of hell, it rips through teams like crap through a goose. It's got good fucking climb, great fucking dive, hellish guns. It's fucking amazing. The problem is the F2G and 288 spam has turned 6.0 into a fucking giant field of rotten fruit. It's just nasty. I mean, you will just get match after match after match after match of nothing but 6v6 where the entire enemy team is F2Gs, AD4s, AM1s, farming fucking ground targets, and your entire team is going to be 288s, French AD4s, farming fucking ground targets. And if you try to get by any of them, because I know some of you are going to say, well, that sounds like an easy job. You get an interceptor spawn. They're all farming two inches off the ground. What's the problem with that? The problem is they're all fucking tanker trash, which means the second they see you, they either A, throw it into the fucking ground to deny the kill because they're fucking pricks, or B, they rush back to the runway and start doing donuts for the rest of the entire match so they don't have to pay a repair cost. Yeah, does that sound like fun to you? Doesn't sound like fun to me. Yeah, so as much as I love this bird, yeah, considering the cost and how fucking toxic the damn tanker trash has gotten, eh, just go for the Yak or the freaking P-47, seriously. I mean, yeah, well, if you're in French ground forces, this thing does get also a hell of a bomb load, so you can use it as anti-gas, and you can use it as a freaking ground attacker, so that's a positive. But yeah, if you want a pure fighter, oh god, I would say avoid anything that can get 6063 like the Black Death, because it's just so bad right now. It's just fucking terrible. Okay, now we get to the slingers of the pasta. The Italians. Oh, I love the Italians, so. And yeah, for being a minor nation, they're actually starting to get quite a lot of freaking premiums. Enough that, yeah, they actually needed two slots, so there you go. I hope they do that with the other minor nations, because that would be nice. The big three get too much crap. I mean, seriously. But let's get to the toys. Starting with Marcolin CR42CN. Well, as you can see, the price is going to be quite cheap, and honestly... I would say grab this thing, because, yeah, with the Italian 50 cal buffs, this thing can not only kick a lot of butt at its own BR, I'm actually taking this thing up into 2733 matches, and, yeah, yeah, three pieces, no problem. I had a great time. I mean, it is not the most freaking batshit agile of the freaking biplanes. That, of course, goes to the freaking Chica, which is Jesus Christ. Yeah, that thing is broken, but, for a freaking Italian biplane, this thing is fun. Those 50 cals are little flamethrowers. It's got a really good climb rate. Pretty damn decent turn rate, especially against monoplanes. And for the price, hell yeah, it's good. Here's another one I find quite good. The IAR-81C. Look at that. 151s at 2.7 BR. Yeah, plus you get friggin' 1,400 rounds of MG. I bought the Luftwaffe skin, because look at it, isn't it pretty? I mean, how could you not love that Luftwaffe skin? Yeah, but the original skin that comes with it too is quite lovely, and the nice thing is, this thing also gets bombs and rockets, so if you want to do ground forces as well as air, here you go, it's versatile. And for the price, honestly, I have gotten more than my money's worth out of this thing. I have had an absolute blast. I mean, yeah, you got to watch the dive speed because it does compress a bit, but yeah, there's a lot of birds that have problems with compression in this game. Yeah, it still hits like a freight train. I mean, it's not hard to get used to. But it would be hard to choose between that and Mr. Quackers. Oh, anybody who knows me knows how how warm and fuzzy I get just thinking about quacking in the middle. I mean, it's Mr. Quackers. How could you not look at the face? Just look at the face. How could you not love the duckies? Yes, and surprisingly, it is quite good as a heavy fighter. 
Because nobody expects you to go fighter mode with it. But good lord, 500 rounds of 151, 2,000 rounds of MG, just load them all with stealth, they'll never dodge. You can feast on ground pounders all day long. It, it's quite fun. And again, if you want to go into ground forces, it can slap on the big old 30 or 37 millimeter. Just saying. Yeah, it can do the work. Climb rate me is a duck. What well, you care? It's a duck. You don't climb. It's a duck. You go quack in the meadow. You'll be fine. And as you can see from the price, pretty damn cheap. Ah, once upon a time, this bird, the beautiful Spitfire Mark 5B, I would have recommended it all day long. And still, if you want a pure fighter, if you want something to just get up there in the sky, dance with the enemy, mwah, it is just lovely. It is just a wonderful bird. The problem is, these days, fucking campers, man. Just nothing but camping douchebags, match after match after match after match. And as much as I love Apostifier, if the tickets aren't in your favor, you're not doing much work with freaking Apostifier. I'm sorry, even if you load the ground targets on the 20s. Eh, you just don't have the ammo load. This thing can't carry bombs. It can't carry rockets. Yeah, trying to freaking bleed tickets in this thing is just an exercise in futility, especially with so many maps these days that you don't even get the little cars. Friggin' the match is over before the cars even spawn, thanks to their stupid 23-minute timer. Yeah, thanks a lot, Kaijin. Yeah, but if you want a pure fighter, I will say it is quite lovely. But honestly, given the choice, since we're both the same BR now, Mr. Chonkers, look at that. He's thick. Yeah, he real thick. But look at that. Look at all that DACA. Look at all the DACA. Look at that DACA for days. And not only can you carry lots and lots of DACA, but even with lots and lots of DACA, you can still strap a 1,000 kilogram and a 250 on this sucker at the same time. And you don't even lose your freaking 30 mils when you do it. Oh, Lord. I have had so, so much fun in this bird. That back gunner can do a lot of work. You freaking got enough firepower. You can just freaking rip into stuff for days. And if the last guy camps, yeah, who cares? Strap on the booms, tell one of the guys to cover you, and just freaking go to town on their ground targets. You will be able to just clean up on this thing. Wait for the tanks to get into a nice clump. Yeah, that thousand kilogram works like a treat, boy. Yeah, I would say yeah, between pasta fire and chonkers, yeah, you'll probably get more versatility out of chonkers, especially if you play the tanks as well as the planes, because again, this thing can do cast work as well as be a fighter. So hell yeah, I would say yeah, go for chonkers. Then we get to our last two. The goulash, the 109G2 non-trop. Oh, the climb rate on this thing is amazing. The freaking dive rate is amazing. Its turn rate, as long as you keep the damn gun pods off, is amazing. Price is a little high, but honestly, if you've got to get one to freaking do some serious grinding, yeah, I would take this over, Giuseppe. As much as I hate to say it, yeah, I would. I honestly would. The climb rate, the handling... Everything on this thing is just so damn good. And if you miss the Romanian Vampire Bat, the Romanian G2, guess what? Go right here and boom! There's the skin. Yep. Oh, boy, that pissed off the Romanians and the Hungarians when they did that. Why they did that, I don't know. Personally, since I have both, yeah, I stick with the pretty white. But yeah... As much as I like Giuseppe, honestly, just get this. It can even carry a bomb, so yes, if you need to do ground forces, it can still do the work. Finally, we get to Giuseppe. Oh, I used to love him, then I had to kill him. Yeah, Giuseppe, once upon a time, was an absolute unholy terror. 
Yes, players would wet their little panties when they saw Giuseppe coming their way. And this, and can it still do work? Yes. Yes, it can still do work. It can still do a lot of work. Again, the problem is the F2G and the 288. Because nowadays, everything is at 5053, freaking 75, 85% of the time. You're going to be sucked into 6 0 matches, and it's going to be nothing but freaking 6 v 6 with tanker trash, freaking ground pounders. And even though this can carry a few bombs, eh, you are not going to compete with an 84 or a 288 when it comes to bleeding tickets. And there's nothing more annoying than trying to catch something like a 288 in a G55. Yeah, you're no. It's no, it's just not going to happen. I'm sorry, not going to happen. They're just going to keep running and running till the freaking time runs out. Tickets run out. You lose. GG. And why? It's, oh, it's just fucking so boring. 6v6 matches shouldn't even fucking exist. It's so bad. Yeah. So as much as I love the Giuseppes, no, seriously, no. Just get the goulash or slap a talisman on one of the lower BR Giuseppes. You will have just as much fun. Or the CO205N2, that's a damn good one too. Yeah, any of those, yeah, you just want to avoid everything above 5053 ish as your main grinder. I mean, if you've got the other birds and you want to add this to your collection, sure, it's it's got 3151s. You're not going to hear me complain about that. It still turns good, climbs decent, dives decent. It's still a good bird. It's just the matchmaking will make you want to cry and pull out your hair. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Minor Nations. I hope you picked you up a lot of toys during the shopping spree. And I hope to see you up there in the clouds. Have a good one, y'all.